And if there's somebody out there that I can help teach how to use this early on in their career and they can apply it and they can have success from it, to me, that's a win. Hello, everyone. This is the Tetra Muse podcast, and my name is James King. This is episode number one. So if you're here, you are here from the start, and I appreciate your support and coming and checking this out. So what is Tetra Muse? I just want to give a brief description of what the goal is with Tetra Muse. Tetra Muse is a platform that I'm starting to build to help musicians learn how to use branding to better connect with their audience and build a culture around their art. In about 2008, my wife and I got married, and we had a really good friend that I was working with who went down to a college, a little community college in Leveland, Texas, called South Plains College. And he would write me and say, dude, you got to come check this place out. I think it's right down your alley. I was reluctant because I wasn't planning on going to college. I just wanted to do music. And we decided to take a, a road trip down there and check it out. And sure enough, they showed me around the facilities, they showed me what they do, and it felt right, and it looked like a great fit. So we decided to pack up our little Honda Civic with everything we could, (laughs) and we took off, man. If you could have seen that Honda Civic, I think that muffler was dragging on the ground the whole way down there. But one of the things we had to do while I was going through the program was take a class that was based on the business side of music. And there was a moment down there where I had to create an EPK. And for anybody who knows how music used to work, we used to have record labels that would essentially sign you and then they would front you money and then you'd go out and you'd try and recuperate the money. So what most artists would try and do is they would try and pitch their music or pitch their brand to a label in hopes that the label would sign them and give them this, uh, this money. So what the EPK was, it was an electronic press kit. And it's essentially like you try to build a little brand around who you are, and then you shoot that out to the record labels. As I was building out my EPK, I actually really loved the process. And I didn't really know what I was doing at the time. But I just, I remember really liking that uh, part of the class and that process. And as a, a funny side note, I looked back at some of the old uh, materials that I created and as a designer, I I cringed and laugh a little bit because I used the uh, infamous papyrus font that you you are not supposed to use. But I totally did. And I can laugh about it now because I work as a professional designer now. But back then, I didn't know any better. I didn't know what I was doing. I I just knew that I really liked the process. So fast forward a couple of years, I end up graduating from that program, getting an associate's degree. We decide to move back home to Utah and I take a construction job because construction was an easy end. My dad did construction for me, for pretty much my whole life. And uh, I decided to take a job there and give myself a year to get my music going. But as most things go in life, I found myself with a mortgage payment. I, we had a kid and life's responsibilities started taking over and I needed to keep working to financially support that. I found myself still working construction about two to three years later and realized I got to go back to school. And I wanted to go back to school for something that could scratch my creative itch and something that could also support and help my music. So I decided to go back to school for graphic design and communications. And what I didn't know at the time was that I would find a deep love of branding. And a lot of that is thanks to a professor I had named Larry Clarkson, who I was just enthralled in his classes. And I didn't know really what he was talking about because most of what we did was based on design and graphic design. But here was this teacher who was talking about strategies and how design needed to have messaging and the messaging needed to support the design. Because if it didn't support the design, then all it is is just pretty artwork. It had no meaning. And when you're talking about design and business, you need to be able to communicate and have a message to it and have meaning and purpose. And man, I just, I ate it up. I was in it, man. And I didn't know it at the time. I didn't even know what it was called until I read a book which changed my life. And that book was The Brand Gap by Marty Neumeyer. 
And my brain exploded. I was like, this is it. This is what I want to do. And here it is. Like, I didn't know this was a thing that people did, but I love it. And I love the concepts behind it. I love the strategy. I love the meaning. And I think the main reason, as I've gotten older, the main reason why I think I love it is because we're really talking about connecting with people. We're talking about learning how to communicate, to connect with people. And I love that. After I graduated college, I started putting a lot of these ideas together where I wanted to start learning how branding fit into the music space. And as I started uncovering more of it and getting more involved in the corporate side with brand management and graphic design, I realized that there's a big opportunity to help people learn how to use branding. Because when you look at the the industry right now, you see a lot of content that is built to help people understand how to build the product and also how to go to market with that product. But there really isn't a lot of content talking about the in-between. Usually when people talk about branding, they skim over it by saying, you need to get photography, you need to get your colors and your typography and the graphics that you're creating. Those are elements of branding, but I wouldn't say that that is fully encompassing what a brand is. Those are what I would call the aesthetic portions or the deliverables based on your actual brand, which is the strategy, which is your values, which is your uh, purpose, your mission, who you are as an individual. So a lot of times I think people mistake marketing for branding and it's really not. One is, is you're creating the structure, you're creating the strategy that's going to communicate and connect with your audience and marketing is the vehicle that sends it out into the world. So really, they're two sides of the same coin. You need both. One, you need to understand what you're going to communicate. The other part is how you communicate it. So one, I would say branding, and the other side of that coin is marketing. And as I've been trying to build this up over the last few years, the hardest part about it has been trying to learn how to articulate that or learn how to ask the right questions because I haven't seen anybody else who's really creating content like this. And it's been an unbelievable uh, process and journey to go through. And with some of the events that I've already put on and some of the musicians I've already talked to and going through the process of this, um, I can already see that this can be a huge help to musicians. And really, that's what I care about most because I am like you guys. I am still trying to pursue music, even though my my intention with music is a little different than it was 15 years ago. It's still something I'm very passionate about. And if there's somebody out there that I can help teach how to use this early on in their career and they can apply it and they can have success from it, to me, that's a win. And that's really what this is for is to try and help build uh, confidence and um, help you guys build a community around it. So I would recommend that as you're starting to go down this path, to create content that you start becoming a little bit more mindful about what the co- the content is communicating to the end consumer. And one of the biggest things that I try to get people to think about is what is culturally significant to the individual that you are trying to reach? What kind of clothing do they like? What are their political ideas? What are their spiritual ideas? And all of these are signifiers to who they are as an individual which might resonate with who you are as an individual. So when you create content visually, you're going to want to create content that's going to resonate with that individual. That is what this platform has been built to do. That is what I'm trying to create. I'm trying to educate musicians on learning how to build the content, build a strategy. So when you go to market, you can better communicate with your audience. And in turn, establish a culture and a community to help you get where you want to go with your art. If you're a musician, please reach out to me. If you have any questions, I would love to hear them. If you would like to continue to go down this path with me, uh, please feel free to hit that subscribe button. You can hit the bell if you'd like. Um, More than anything, we just want to create a community and uh, a place that can help people thrive 
and create content that's going to help them get to where they want to go. So I'm really glad to have you guys here. Thank you so much and look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thank you.